Hey! Josh Zaring, Jay Zaring Studios. Today I'm gonna to show you how to use the high pass filter to sharpen just about anything. So fasten your seatbelt and enjoy this ride. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do here, uh, depending on how many areas and how many uh, different ways you wanna sharpen, you just want to create a copy for each version. So I'm going to just drag this down and create two layers, of two copies of my layer. I'm going to start with the eyes. So I'm going to go to filter, other, high pass, and put it at three pixels. This will this will change. You should adjust it depending on the size of the, your photo and you know if you're doing it if you're doing a portrait, how much fills the screen. But you're going to want to adjust this. Uh, three pixels seems pretty good here, and then I'm going to go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and just drop the saturation because you just only want to be adding sharpening here. You don't want to be adding weird colors. It can look like uh, chromatic aberration or something like that, and you don't want to be adding that to your photo. So then you go here and you can click either soft light. You can see the difference here is really subtle. You go to soft light, or you can go to vivid or linear. I usually go with linear because then I can just back off, and it's it starts out really like it really sharpens it, and then you can just back off of it. Uh, then what you do is you create a layer mask, Control or Command I to invert, and I'm just going to leave that go for now, and go to my next one. I'm going to label this one eyes, and then I'm going to label this one hair. And this one is the same same method. Go to filter, other, high pass, and I'm gonna go to five pixels on that. And then again, I'm gonna go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and just drop that down. Because you can see on this one it's adding color, and you don't want to do that. And I'm gonna go to linear light again. And you can definitely see that one. Uh, it looks like a bad sharpening job, but that's why you paint it in paint in where you need it. And then again, you put a layer mask on that, control or option I, invert. And now we're gonna paint in the hair. Let's start with the hair here with my white brush. Make sure your layer mask is selected. Get the right size brush here. I'm gonna just start at the top. You don't wanna try to sharpen things that are blurred out, like especially if it's a natural lens blur, you don't wanna try to sharpen that, it'll just look bad and it'll just create noise. So you just want to focus on these areas here. And you can see, I'll zoom in on this a little more, you can see what it's doing instantly. See? And that's a little too far, so what I'm going to do is just back off until it looks natural. Just want to add a little bit of sharpening to it. 29%, between 20 and 30% is usually where I stay. I don't go too much further than that on the hair because it is hair. It doesn't have to be sharp. Uh, in a portrait, you're mainly focusing on the eyes anyway, but it is nice to, to just sharpen the hair selectively. Now I'm going to go for the eyes and I'm going to zoom in on those and I'm only going to do her eyes. I'm not going to do like the surrounding area here. And you can see that's pretty extreme as well. Then you just back off of it a little bit. Whatever you like and, and whatever you think looks natural. Uh, you don't have to make it look natural. This is just a guideline. I just want to sharpen the eyes just enough where it really pops. Like where it really pops. And then I can go back onto the hair here. See, these are blind eyelashes, so it's, they're a little hard to see. But you can go in there and just sharpen the eyelashes. I have a few, or the eyebrows. So I'm going to put this in a folder to show you before and after. So I'm going to zoom in here. You can see, you can definitely see the sharpening. Okay, now I'll turn it off. It's off and back on again. And you can, you can definitely go on the extreme end of this. I recommend not doing that. Just sharpen a little bit more. Uh, you can also, I'm just going to create a copy of hair here. I'm going to go over here to the tree here. You can sharpen anything you want with this, 
Now with this hair copy, I'm just going to type tree. Just for example's sake, I'm going to use a copy of the hair to do the tree here. And so make sure you have your mask selected. I'm just going to go over here and paint on this tree. And this, I'm going to go, I'm going to push it all the way up here and show you what that looks like. Now that kind of takes away from the face in a portrait, but just to show you how far you can go with this, you can individually sharpen everything in the photo if you want. And you can see the difference there. Now I personally wouldn't sharpen the tree, but the, for example's sake. Now I'm going to move on to kind of a landscape image. I'm going to copy that twice again. And this one I'm going to label big and small. For the, the more coarse details, it would be the big and the small would be the more fine detailed stuff. And for the big, I'm just going to go here, filter, other, high pass. And I'm going to do a really big one, sort of big one. Now you can see like the contrasting details there. And that, I definitely have to suck out the color. So I go to Hue Saturation and just drop that down and put a layer mask on that. Control or Option I. Go into the small, do the same thing. Filter, Other, High Pass, and drop that down to 3, 3.2. Put Then put a layer mask on that. Control or Option I. I'm going to start with the, the big details here. So then I'm going to go to Linear Light and paint in my details. I'm going to start with the large, and that would be the rocks here. And I'm, I could be a little more selective about this, but I'm just going to cover the rocks here, the large rocks. And a little bit in the clouds here. And you can see how well this clears it up. It's like you're, you're stopping down your lens almost. It's kind of really nice sharpening. Now I'm going to drop that down until it looks good. Maybe like 36% seems good. Now I'm going to go to my small, put it on linear light and do the sand. You can see that really kind of has a 3D quality to it. And I'm actually just going to make a nice big brush and go across the water here, do all of that. And if you zoom in, you normally, this doesn't add a whole lot of noise if it adds any at all. It does a really good job of sharpening it. You just have to be the best judge. Like right now, zooming out on the water, that's much too, that's much, too much for me. That's, that's more sharpening than I would ever do. So I'll just drop that down. 48% seems good to me. Now I'll show you the before and after. That's before and that's after. So that's a nice way to sharpen things without just going into the sharpening menu and covering your entire image with the same sharpening settings because that's going to sharpen things that are intentionally out of focus. It's going to sharpen things uh, like these big details I have up front and the small, fine details. It's just going to sharpen it all the same and that doesn't look right. It just looks like you ran it through a filter and said, okay, now it's sharp. This is a much better method of sharpening because you're selectively sharpening and you're using different settings for each portion of the picture for a better result at the end. I hope you enjoyed this video on the high pass filter. Uh, it's a really neat way to sharpen things and there's so many different variants that you can use. Uh, you can go real extreme, go real light. You can layer it up if you want to with different sharpening settings. It's a really versatile way to sharpen your images. and. If you do it right, you're not adding noise or you're not adding a lot of noise. But to me, it seems like a, a real high quality way of sharpening any image. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and tell your friends. Keep creating and keep it awesome. Join me on Patreon.com to take part in special rewards like Priority Question and Answer, Lightroom and Photoshop presets and actions, BTS videos and photos, previews for upcoming content, and even suggest ideas for tutorials. And also you have the option of being credited for your support of Jay Zaring Studios, which is really cool. Check it out at patreon.com slash jzaring.